The 631st edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with promo code MMASGBN to claim your first time deposit offer of up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code MMASGPN. And we're also brought to you by Rhythm. Rhythm's college football and NFL projections are now live. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Gumby Freeland here with the MMA Gambling Podcast, episode 631. Today, we are breaking down CFFC. And of course, if you are a frequent of the show, you are probably not expecting to see me if you're on YouTube, which, by the way, if you are, thank you for subscribing ahead of time. And if you aren't on YouTube, you're probably used to hearing the sounds of Jeff Fox's voice first. Well, as you know, Jeff went on vacation, and before he left, we did a whole bunch of work. Uh, where we tried to get some episodes codes recorded ahead of time so that we would for sure have the ability to make sure that, you know, we, we didn't miss too much Jeff, so to speak. Uh, so one of them was this CFFC episode. And just after he left for vacation, it was absolutely ravaged by pullouts, injuries, and all kinds of other things. So in addition to the main event, which had already fallen off before we started uh, filming, we also lost the fight between uh, Santo Curatolo and Casey Norton. We lost a fight between Lindsey Jones and Eric Nolan. Um, a different fight entirely, uh, one between Frank Wells and Roma Kurashvili. That one got a brand new opponent for uh, for Frank Wells. So basically three of the five fights that we had already broke down for you guys, uh, in addition to a main event disappearing right before we went to air, uh, all of those disappeared. One of my lightning round picks disappeared. And I was like, well, I simply can't turn out an episode here with three picks that you can't use, four if you count the lightning round, and only two or three of them that you can. So uh, what I decided to do is I went back to the drawing board, I grabbed my sheet, I broke down the three other fights that will be on this main card. Uh, I'm going to break those down for you uh, all by myself. We're going to do this completely solo. Then as soon as those three fights are down, I'm going to switch it back over to the original broadcast where you will get me and Jeff chatting it up about the co-main event, or at least what I'm going to call the co-main event, which is between Angel Alvarez and Justin Montalvo. And then uh, we'll also break down uh, Chris Dawkins versus Tafon Chukwu. So at the end of the day, you're still going to get five picks. One of the lightning rounds picks is broken. The other one you can you can go ahead and enjoy. So six picks total at the end of this card, which winds up being pretty much the whole card until they find a way to fill it in because it has been blown up at this point. So uh, I wanted to make sure we got you guys present stuff, active stuff, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so uh, before I begin breaking it down for you, let me go ahead and tell you about the bosses. The Sports Gambling Podcast launched their 32 NFL team previews, and they're giving away a $500 Circa future for their listeners. Uh, make sure that you listen. You get a code word in every single one of them. And of course, then you get that chance to win that $500 futures ticket. Plus the EPL returns. So make sure to check out the Sucker Gambling Podcast and the EPL Gambling Podcast for your footy fix. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on the SGPN app. All right, guys, so uh, kicking off what we're going to be talking about today, uh, I'm going to get everything started with a middleweight contest between Nick Galanti and Brandon Holmes. Uh, once again, you know, my my co-host usually cues you up uh, with the wins and losses on these guys. And, you know, I, I've got, got the information here. I've got it nearby. I'm not uh, one of those guys who does uh, six hours of tapology work because I, I'm, face it, I, I'm a film guy. I'm not a uh, tapology guy. So let me get you guys. Um, the real basics on these guys before I start breaking them down. So the first one, like I said, we're going to talk about middleweights, Nick Galanti versus Brandon Holmes. So Galanti's 2-0. He has fought, you know, pretty much just the, the regular gauntlet of regional competition you might expect. Uh, and then Brandon Holmes, 3-0. He's been fighting a little bit lower end stuff. He's been outside of the CFFC. So as a result, usually when I see these kinds of things and I see guys, you know, one coming in from... CFFC and one coming in from outside, nearly identical records, 2-0, 3-0. Usually you see the one coming from the organization coming as the favorite. So I'm going to ping Nick Galanti here as a slight favorite, let's say like negative 150 or so. And I'm going to go with him in this fight too. If he comes in anywhere south of 200, 
I really like him in this fight. And the reason is, is if you watch Brandon Holmes' fight, I, you know, you can get one of his fights um, from the organization Fight For It, which is a, a promotion that happens in the uh, southeast part of the United States. If you watch his fight in that, you could see he, he has some decent takedown defense, at least for the type of guy he's fighting. Uh, but one of the things I really don't like about him is just how stiff his legs are. You know, he stands in place really heavily some of it's because he's trying to sit down on his punches and it's obviously paid off because he's knocked two of his three professional opponents out but he's really sitting down on those legs kind of hard when he does decide to blitz his arms come way before his legs do again because he's just kind of not light on his feet in any way shape or form uh so i don't like that about brandon holmes i think that that's obviously an issue and then you know the power is there so you can be happy about that but outside of that i'm not really thrilled about what i've seen from him and then on the other side galante I like what his punches look like outside of, I just don't believe they have enough extension. Uh, he throws really tight to his body and, and doesn't seem to be committing to him. But the real reason I see that he doesn't commit to those strikes really heavily is I, I think he really just loves the fact that his wrestling so good. You know, like he's a, he's a guy who strives on his top control. He really likes the fact that he works on top, loves to drop ground and pound. In fact, I found one of his Amy fights before he picked the guy up, slammed him right on his head. Now, obviously much lower level of competition than Brandon Holmes, but if he's a guy who, you know, sort of because he fights so close to his own body, sort of draws the opponent in to try to get in the, you know, rock him, sock him robot range. I also think he's the right kind of guy that's sort of going to dip underneath those overextended strikes of Brandon Holmes, get in on those legs, and then ultimately probably ground and pound him out. So I expect Galanti to be a slight favorite. You know, like I said before, probably in the negative 150 range. Um, if he balloons up into the low twos, I'd say I'd still kind of like him, and I'd probably might be considering a more parlay type material. And then if he was, you know, in the threes and this kind of gets out of hand, I, I'd probably just pass altogether because again, Holmes has got some knockout power. We probably don't want to be going against that just blindly uh, at that number. All right, we're going to move to the second fight of the night. And that is Lal Leshe, uh, which, you know, usually I would love to have Jeff here so I could make fun of him. Shalal Leshe. Uh, is fighting Jacob Romano. So Lal Leshy, we're just going to call him Leshy, uh, is two in one in his professional career. All of those fights coming in CFFC. So he's faced some pretty good level of competition. Uh, Jacob Romero, uh, similarly, five and two. So a little bit more uh, experience, but uh, three of his last four fights have also all come from CFFC. Uh, he's alternated wins and losses in his last fight. Win, loss, win, loss, win. Uh, and whereas Leshy is on a two-fight winning streak, he lost his first fight and lost or and won the next two after that, rather. So I expect just because you the sheer size of the record here, both of them coming from CFFC, Jacob Romano to be the guy who comes in as the favorite. I would expect it to be. Fairly significant, you know, probably low twos, maybe negative 225 plus 200 on the return for Leshy. Uh, and I'm going to say, I actually like Leshy in this fight. Uh, these two have a uh, an opponent in common. They both fought, um, fought and lost to, rather, uh, fought and lost to Bilal Hassan, who has turned out to be a really nice prospect uh, coming out of the Mid-Atlantic region. 4-0 with like one no contest or something like that. Two of his wins are these guys right here. Um, but like, if you look at the manner in which he beat those two, it is completely different. And I, you know, I'm not here trying to draw out the MMA math on you. I'm not one of those guys. I'm not an idiot. Uh, but I will tell you, like, sometimes you can draw some corollaries here. And in the Jacob Romano fight, like uh, every time Romano tried to get in on a takedown and he got in on a lot of them, they were all single legs and he ate a ton of punches trying to do so. Uh, in addition to that, you know, Leshy just brutalized him with the strikes in the clinch, knees to the body, bloodied him up at the end of the first round, and then hit him with a spinning wheel kick that had him trying to take down the referee after the fight. Like, I mean, Hassan took it to Romero. Uh, every time, again, he tried for a takedown, he paid for it. Now, I also think he has to kind of try to take for go for a takedown because I don't love what I've seen from him with the hands. Um, he's a little bit on the slow side on those. Um, his punches seem kind of rote, like you kind of can expect what to see of him, which, I mean, I guess isn't the worst thing in the world when you're only a 5-2 and two regional fighter. Uh, but also, this is flyweight. This is a division that typically comes with lots of speed, lots of technique when it comes to that kind of uh, striking. And the piece that I dislike the most about Romano in this fight is I don't think he can wrestle Leshy. Uh, Leshy, in that fight with Bilal Hassan, 
he, he was chain wrestling the heck out of that guy. You know, he was going from one takedown to the other. He had tons of control time. He ultimately lost a split decision in that fight. But the way he lost the split decision was basically one of the judges was like, man, Leshy had tons of control time up against the cage, on the mat, making Hassan work. And then like kind of the damage was for the other two, you know, like the fact that he threw to the body and with knees when, when Leshy was coming in, the fact that when they did separate, obviously Bilal Hassan was the better of the two strikers. So at, at the end of the day here, I, I don't know too much of what Leshy looks like on the feet because he doesn't throw that much. But I think whatever it is, he's probably fast enough to stay away from Romano. And then when you look at the two styles of wrestling, one guy goes for a single and that's like, it's single, 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 single. And then the other guy is chaining things together and making things work. And I think his sprawl is probably better. So I'm going to go with the guy who I think is a little bit more of an experienced wrestler, a guy who, you know, if this was a five and two opponent versus a three and O oh opponent, you usually see a really close line, but because he's got that one kind of sketchy loss in there, I think you're going to wind up with a really good line on Leshy. So uh, give me, Zalal Leshy over Jacob Romano. Uh, again, I think we're probably going to get right around two to one money. Now, for the final fight, we're going to go up to featherweight, the aforementioned Frank Wells, who I had actually just broken down a fight with Frank Wells. Uh, he was supposed to fight on this card against a Georgian fighter named Roman Kurashvili. Um, and uh, he's kind of a CFFC darling, as I mentioned in that breakdown, which of course you'll never hear. He's five and three, but he always gets really nice placement on the cards. Uh, all eight of his professional fights have come in CFFC. Um, you know, he's kind of one of their guys that I think they've always thought was going to wind up being a prospect, a contender series type guy. Um, and he's going to come in here against David Magoyan, who is four and oh, coming in off of a TKO doctor stoppage in LFA. Not that long ago, too. That was like two months ago. The guy looked really good against AJ Robb, uh, who is not an easy opponent. Like if you look at AJ Robb's uh, list of losses, it's insanely good. In addition to Magoyan, he's also lost to like Mario Batista and Hunter Azure. And uh, I even wrote it down. There was one more really good name in there too. Who is it? Oh, Isaac Thompson, who I think will be, you know, a contender series guy in a year anyway. So Magoyan coming off of being in a very select group of guys who beat AJ Robb and did so brutally with some really nasty ground and pound. So you know, originally, I had Frank Wells as a big favorite over Kurishvili. Kurishvili's record, not too good, not a CFFC guy, not having fought in some of those bigger promotions, you know, the LFA's Cage Warriors, all those kinds of things. I thought Wells was going to come in as a favorite. Now, Magoyan is short notice. So sometimes that affects the line, but he's also 4 0. He's flying that Russian flag. Uh, and he doesn't have the standard Russian name, which I know I, I joke always, you know, kind of gives us a different line. But you know, that's kind of the fact of the matter here, right? Is that Magoyan is a guy, a 4-0 undefeated Russian. You know, you automatically see that in tapology, the odds go up. So I actually think Magoyan probably a decent size favorite here. Probably, you know, that same negative 225 I talked about in that last fight with Romano. Um, and I'm going to go with him in this fight. You know, my, my big knock on Frank Wells has just been, I, I trust a lot of what he does. You know, I like his fluidity on the feet and stuff like that. I just don't trust his takedown defense enough. And, you know, Magoyan... I, we saw it in the AJ Rob fight. The dude has got a ground game and it looks pretty damn good. Uh, I like particularly the double. Uh, I don't like as much when he gets him up against the cage and he has to reshoot and lock his hands and pick people up. I do like when he gets people out in the open and you know, that might actually be better for a Frank Wells fight anyway, because Wells is a guy who likes to put pressure on. He likes to, you know, that's again, why CFFC likes him. He's a dog. Uh, so he's going to be marching forward and trying to get to McGoy and I can see him ducking under hitting one of those blast doubles. If he gets him in the center of the cage, I think it's going to be hard for Wells to get up. Um, and you're going to see that ground and pound open way up. McGoyan cares way more about doing damage than holding position. So uh, again, for these early prelims that I'm breaking down for you guys here, uh, the three fights I'm breaking down, I like Nick Galanti over Brandon Holmes. I like Exal Leshy over Jacob Romano. Uh, and then I like David Magoyan over Frank Wells. Now, we're going to get to the part of the episode where Jeff rejoins me and we get two breakdowns courtesy uh, of the original card. But before we do that, let me quickly tell you about Underdog Fantasy because Underdog Fantasy uh, is back and it is better than ever. If you go 8-0 on Underdog Fantasy, you can win 325 times your entry. That's with their pick eight or Play fantasy football the right way with Best Ball. Best Ball Mania is live right now, and it's got $15 million in prizes. 
And on top of all of that, they've just launched their season-long college football projections as well, higher and lower for all of your college football favorites. And you can now use special entries and boosts on all flex entries. I personally, uh, you know me, I always like to come in here with Atlanta Braves pick, but they are icy cold right now. So I'm going to use my special pick here on Charlie Morton. But rather than saying good things about Charlie Morton here on Tuesday, I'm going to say take the higher than on his five and a half hits allowed. Ah, it's not all that great to hear, but that is the thing I'm going to use it on. So sign up now with promo code MMASGPN to claim your special pick and first time deposit offer of up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code MMASGPN. All right, we're moving to down a weight class, lightweight fight. Angel Alvarez from Puerto Rico, Cuba, Cuba, excuse me. Kuva. Uh, he is fighting Justin Montalvo from the United States of America. Three five minute rounds. Um, Montalvo, kid, marvelous. We got some fantastic. This is another great nickname matchup coming up here. But well, we got some we got some nicknames for you this week. Kid Marvelous is six and two with four knockouts. He's been knocked out once. This is his debut in CFFC. One and two over his last three. Did win his last fight. Two and two in Bellator. A year younger than Alvarez, five inches taller. Salsa King is Alvarez. Fantastic. Salsa King versus Kid Marvelous. Salsa King 7-2 with three knockouts. He's been knocked out once, submitted once. This is his debut. Lost win, lost win over his last four. Regional champion. Used to fight at 145 and 170. He went 1-0 in LFA. We got even better nicknames coming up. At least one more. This is LFA. Uh, CFFC might be a minor league, but it's not a minor league when it comes to nicknames. Yeah, so I'm going to go with, uh, you know, I think, when I look at this fight, I think Angel Alvarez should come in as a favorite. I actually think he should be a massive favorite. I'm not sure he will be, being that Montalvo has fought a couple of times for Bellator against like people you've heard of, right? Like he fought Archie Coglin um, in, in Bellator. And who was the other one? Was it Dimitri Hertesenko? Hertesenko. Um, so like he's fought a couple of times in, in Bellator against like, you know, at least one person that everybody's heard of. Um, but Alvarez, I, I think is just head and shoulders better. Uh, I will say, I bet you this line comes in very similar to the one we just talked about with Jones and Nolan, maybe negative 150 for Alvarez plus 125 for Montalvo. I personally would line it up in the 200s uh, for for Alvarez. I think, you know, like negative 230, negative 240 wouldn't be out of the question. And I'd still probably like him in a parlay. But I think the line will come in closer because Montalvo is kind of a CFFC favorite with some Bellator experience. But the, the big difference for me, too, is if you watch those two fights in Bellator with Montalvo, which are like the last time he fought like, you know, super high quality uh you know, competition. The one against Herta Cinco, it is Herta Cinco. Do you have their records open right now? Yeah. Um, who are you looking did for? He, did he lose to Dimitri Herta Cinco? I want to say it was Bellator 300. Let me see. Um, I just want to, before I just continuously yep. talk about his fight with Herta Cinco. Yeah, I he wanna, did. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. It was Herta Cinco. Um, so, like, when he fought Herta Cinco, like, if you watch the beginning of that fight, he looks like he wants no part of being on the feet with this guy. Like he just keeps backing up. He keeps putting his back against the cage. He keeps backpedaling. Um, and I know I said that a little bit about Lindsey Jones too. I swear not every breakdown on the CFFC card is people are straight afraid to strike, but like he just looked worried and it was fresh off of being knocked out by Archie Coughlin. So like, since being knocked out, he looks a little bit more hesitant on the feet to stand and trade. And as a result, like a lot of his other attributes drop off too. Like he looks worse in the clinch. He looks worse on his takedowns. And like, you know, he rebounded with a win. So obviously he's shaking some of that off, but some of that too is just like a step down in competition to give him a prop up. This is not a step down in competition anymore. Angel Alvarez hits like a goddamn truck. This dude hits so freaking hard. He winds up on a big left hand. And when he, you know, when he hits people, they go down. And so like, you got a guy in Justin Montalvo who, as I said before, since being knocked out, looks scared to exchange, looks scared to have that power come in on him. And now you're going to match him with somebody who's like known for their power. And for me, you know, even if that means he's way too tentative on the feet and he stays extra safe and doesn't get hit with that big knockout, I'd still worry about him because that means also he's going to be doing all those other things worse than he was doing before. Like the same problem I had in the Hertzinko fight where he just doesn't put things together because he's so worried about getting his clock cleaned again. So whether or not his chin is shot in that Archie Coghlan fight, like showed us a big hole of his, you know, who's to say, but 
I do know that like it clearly has changed how he fights a little bit and Angel Alvarez is the perfect person to exploit that. So give me Alvarez. Uh, like I said, I'm guessing negative 150. Um, but I again, I like it up into the twos. All right, the Salsa King is the pick. All right, before we get to the main event, rhythm we have to get to first. Football season is here, and the college football and NFL models are now live on rhythm. Create your own winning badly model or let rhythm do the heavy lifting for you. You decide what stats matter most to you, and rhythm builds a custom model around that. Or just let rhythm and its predictive model do the heavy lifting. Rhythm uses AI projections from MIT data scientists who are very smart from what I hear. Rhythm already has you covered for NFL week one and college football week zero. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpockets.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpockets.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. Circus Sports is back with Circus Survivor and Circus Millions, giving away $16 million in guaranteed prizes. Imagine the regret you'll feel if you win your office Survivor pool but didn't enter the Circus Survivor. Don't have a trip booked for Las Vegas yet before football? Ultimate Contest Weekend is a great time to go out. You can hang with our bosses, Ryan and Sean. Tell them how great we are and enjoy some of the open bar events. The greatest sports book in the world, August 22nd through the 24th. Use promo code SGP15 to save 15% on your hotel room for sign-up weekend. Sign up in person at Circus Sports between now and September 7th. Use a proxy to play from anywhere. We even have a deal with a proxy. Go to proxy.footballcontest.com to save you 50 bucks with promo code SGP. All right, a couple of UFC cast-offs. Cast offs. Usually they travel the other way. They go from CFC to the UFC. These guys did that, and then they, they have come back. And that would be... Big boys, heavyweights, Chris Daukas, United States of America, Tefan and Chuk Wee from Cameroon, three five-minute rounds. And Chuk Wee is the Cameroon Express, six and four with four knockouts. He's been knocked out himself twice, 2-0 and in CFFC. He's lost three straight fights and only won one of his last five. Has not won a fight since September 2021. Used to fight at middleweight and light heavyweight. Missed weight before at middleweight, but now he's got a whole 80 more pounds he can add on if he wants. Uh, one and oh on Dana White contender series, uh, five years younger than Mr. Dawkins. He's got an inch of reach or is that height inch of reach on him. And I forgot to write down his UFC record record in the UFC was two and four. Uh, as for Dawkins, 12 and seven with 11 knockouts. He's been knocked out six times, submitted once four and two in CFFC. He's lost four straight fights, all via knockout or TKO. He's not won since September, 2021, just like in Chukwi. Went 4-4 four four in the UFC, started off 4-0, then lost four straight. Used to fight at light heavyweight, 2013 Pro MMA debut, two inches taller than Nchukwi. Yeah, Chris Dawkins is definitely a case of somebody who uh, did so well, he probably got himself a new contract, and that ultimately was the reason he got cut, too. Um, because like if he was making a little bit less, they'd probably give him another shot. But um, I'm going to go with Chris Dawkins probably as a favorite. I'm going to say it's not going to get too out of control because Chukwe is also a UFC veteran. Uh, and Dawkins has been knocked out four times in a row. Um, so let's say like negative 200 for Chris Dawkins. I'm going to go with him in this fight. I think, um, you know, a couple of things at play here for me. Number one, uh, I like that Chris Dawkins is going back up to heavyweight. Uh, I, I didn't hate his experiment with going to 205 but like look the best part about Chris Dawkins the best part about his game the thing that was winning him fights when he first showed up in the heavyweight division in the UFC is he's fast he's fast for a heavyweight despite his build and despite you know that he doesn't look like much you know he's not one of those big hulking heavyweights who looks like they're you know huge and explosive he's so fast and He's so much faster than the average heavyweight when you add in that he's got like a little bit of wrestling in there that can can play up and that he's a decent, technically proficient boxer and has good power. Like all of that plays up. So I love the fact that he's going back up to heavyweight. I think that's probably the right place for him. And I hate the fact that Tafon Chukwi is going to heavyweight, right? This is a guy who fought, and don't get me wrong, he missed weight at middleweight. He probably belongs at light heavyweight. But this is a guy who used to cut down to middleweight all the time and now is going up to heavyweight after being cut by the UFC, and which, of course, begs the question, like, what, what's this dude's motivation look like? Is he just not willing to put himself through a hard weight cut anymore and is just going to, you know, beat up some regional heavyweights real quick and then try to catch uh, another break? Maybe, but also it just seems like maybe he's not able to make that weight anymore is my guess. And he's, he's probably working a little bit less hard now that he's not in a UFC training camp. I'm worried about his cardio. His cardio has always been bad. And if he's not, you know, doing the work to get his weight down, granted, he's not going to have to do a weight cut probably, 
but like I worry that he's maybe not got the cardio either. Dawkins is a guy who can go, you know, three hard rounds. I like that about him. Uh, I like the fact that as long as he stays away from the big bomb from Chukwe early, I think he will have more power later in the fight. Of course, it begs the question, can he stay away from the big bomb early? He didn't in his last three heavyweight fights or his last light heavyweight fight, but I kind of think he's tech more technically sound on the feet. I like the way his hooks land. Uh, I think he probably backs up Chukwe. I'd like to see him just like lean on him for the first two minutes and just zap Chukwe's arms. I don't know if he'll do that, but I, regardless, I like Chris Dawkins here. I think he's more well-rounded. He stays away from the big bomb early and uh, edges this one out. All right. Lightning round time. Zap. Bang. Boom. Pow. So the, the lightning round was a little bit trickier for me being that they canceled a couple of fights. Yeah. Um, so one of the ones I like, I like Riley Palmer. He's a bantamweight coming up. He's won his first two pro fights. He looked really good doing it in those first two fights, both of them by arm bar. I don't know how sustainable that is in the long term, but it does seem like they're giving him an opponent where hopefully he can just hit another arm bar and like win again. So like it seems like they're lining that one up for him. Um, and then who else do I like? Letitia Mole, I guess, what could be my second one. Letitia Mole, she comes from a boxing background. She's going to be making her pro MMA debut. She did fight a bunch of times as an amateur MMA fighter. Um, and she had a little bit of trouble with wrestling in there, obviously coming from a boxing background. Um, I even think she did some kickboxing fights, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but like, you know, she, she's she got clearly the boxing chops she needs in order to hang. And uh, they're giving her, I want to say, an 0-2 opponent here first. Um, so you might not be able to get the best line in the whole world, but she's 0-0. So who knows? Maybe. Um, so those would be my two extra picks for CFFC 134. All right, we are done with the regional stuff. We were back with UFC. We got a big UFC pay per view going down in Perth, Australia. We're going to start kicking that off tomorrow with our prelim picks, and the next day with our main card picks and some fancy mm -hmm. plays for you. In the meantime, we shall be in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. We shall be on YouTube, of course, MMB Gambling Podcast. Hit the subscribe button, please, and thank you. Smash it if you if you choose. Uh, Twitter, SGPN MMA is our account gummies at gumby Vreeland. i'm at jeff fox writer i'm the same on instagram get it in my sub stack enter my pick'em contest for ufc 305 at money mma.substack.com listen to gummy's top turtle mma podcast he's got a couple of aussies on this week yeah sean couchy uh who's got crazy ko power at bantamweight uh and cody hadone who is a uh, up and coming flyweight all right so check that out and of course, we're at sportsgamblingpockets.com, sportsgamblingpockets.com slash store, sportsgamblingpockets.com slash Patreon. So you get some uh, bonus content for us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Like I said, Wonder Bread Warrior, Jeff Fox, Salsa King, Gumby Vreeland. We'll talk to you then.